Do you use a, a glove when you putt? Uh, I do not. Then you should experiment not wearing one with this either. It will increase your feel to some degree. The joke is you wouldn't wear a condom if you didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. If you are like me and you suck at your short game, this video is going to be awesome. We're meeting with our D1 former head coach that's going to help us with the 60 degree and give us three different shots that we utilize everywhere in the course so we get on the green, which is basically the main point of this entire game. So without further ado, without wasting any more time, Let's get into it. What we're gonna start with today is just kind of an interesting test, okay? okay? I want you to hit two shots for me from right here to this red can, which is 25 yards away. Do you use a, a glove when you putt? Uh, I do not. Okay, well, then you should experiment not wearing one with this either. Okay. okay. It, it will increase your feel to some degree. The joke is you wouldn't wear a condom if you didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> But seriously, you get a little bit more feel when you when you don't wear a glove on your short ones. So now I'm going to have you hit two of these. After you've hit both of them, I'm going to ask you the question. Number one, did you hit it solidly? Number two, did it go the height you expected it to go? Okay, was it solid? Uh, it felt a little solid, but... <laughs> well, you can't be slightly wet, dead, pregnant, or solid. Yeah. Or so no. No, it was thin. It was, it was thin, thin, very Did thin. Did it go the height you wanted it to go? I know. It no, didn't. it went lower because it was thin. Got it. Okay. I don't like your chances. Here we go. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. That's just what the we test, need to see. I have failed. We've done well. We've done well. Okay. Now, part of this is an important part of the game. Here's the way I want you to understand it. You've done a very good job of building your swing up till now and learning all your fundamentals, practicing hard, all the good things that happen. So I want you to think of, in that regard of your swing as being a machine, okay? Mm -hmm. And these are the attachments to the machine, okay? okay? Every one, if hit properly, will go a different height and a different distance, mm -hmm. okay? So when you get to this one, your most lofted wedge, and you hit that one as far as you can, yeah. okay? What happens if you're closer to the hole than that? The answer is you have to do less of something to make the ball go shorter. Okay. Okay. Unfortunately, there are many possibilities. You could take it back normally and go through short. You could take it back short and go through normally. You could take it back short and go through short. You could swing slowly. You could open up and cut across it. You could buy a 64 degree wedge or you could drink heavily. All of which should slow the club down to some degree. However, now the first thing we need to know is where the power is going to come from. I'm going to do something I don't want you to do. I'm going to hit a shot now without moving my body at all. The reason I'm showing you this is we have enough power from here up in what's called the arm swing yeah. to get the ball to the hole for all the shots we're going to discuss today. Okay. Therefore, what we need from here down is not more power you have enough, but rather more stability. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we do from here down so far? We've talked a lot about that. That's the pivot. And when you do the pivot properly, you get two things. First, you get power because you go fast. But secondly, you get stability because you end up with your thighs touching together, bounced up to the tip of the toe. Yeah. Ask an average player to hit a half a wedge and he will make half a pivot, which will give him half the power, but unfortunately will also give him half the stability. Right. From this position I'm showing you right here, where my thighs are not touching together and I'm not fully up to the tip of the toe, there's a tremendous tendency to wobble. Mm -hmm. How much wobble do you have to have before you begin to miss hit shots? Yeah. Not very much. Okay, so what that means is you should do the pivot only if you do it fully. Okay. If you're ever going to do something less than full, we need a different motion from the waist down. Today's motion is called knee pressure. Knee pressure differs from the pivot in two specific ways. Number one, when you do the pivot, okay, your thighs touch together at the end. When you use knee pressure, your thighs do not touch. When you do the pivot, your right foot comes off the ground. When you do use knee pressure, your right foot stays down. It is impossible to keep your right foot down on the way through if you have shifted weight to the right side on the way back. Uh -huh. Because then as you drift to the left and turn, that's what's going to pull the foot off the ground. So what you've got to do to do this, it's a little tricky, is you've got to have no weight shift at all. Okay. okay. So you start 50-50, and even though you turn and cock the wrist, you maintain 50-50, so you can maintain it at impact and maintain it at the end of the swing. 
the turning and standing we discussed in the finish is still going to happen here but instead of having the left foot being the pivot point we're going to keep the, the pivot point between the two feet and turn and stand when you go through got it okay when we talked about the release what we said is get ahead to start it right turn it over to square it up that's still completely correct okay but on this one what i'm going to do is i'm going to stay down and turn the club over and let it pass me i want you to watch the trajectory on this shot Okay. The reason that ball went straight is because the club face was square at the moment of impact. Yeah. The reason it was low and running is because it was square in the process of closing. Yeah. Now what we want is we want it to be square at impact, but it does not have to continue to close past you. Once it gets to here, if you turn and stand up with it, the club will not continue to close. Gotcha. The, the terminology used to describe that action is, quote, holding it off. And when you hold it off, you will finish in a position where the handle is in, the club head is out, and the toe is right of the heel. We're going to get a very different trajectory when we hit it. And it's going to want to stop when it hits the green much more easy. Nice. Okay, now, a couple things before we get you started. Number one, the, for the normal height shot, you're going to still play the ball. One ball's with inside the left heel, mm -hmm. and you're still going to have the club pointing at your belt buckle. Okay. But what we want for a stance is the narrowest one of all, six inches or less between the heels, but we want it to also be open. Okay, okay. so square means both toes are the same distance from the ball. Close means your left foot's closer to the ball than the right one. And open means that your uh, left foot is farther from the ball than the right one. Okay. Now, I don't want you to think of this as aiming left. Okay, what this is, is clearing a path for the hands. When you have a square stance and you go hard, when you start down, the left leg gets out of the way of the circular hand path. But if you're gonna hit a very short shot, you might not turn as well, and this thigh might be in your way. Okay. So by starting with it out of the way, it makes it easier to continue to turn and stay on your circle. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. <clears throat> staying down is kind of an interesting concept when you make a normal full swing the momentum of the club pulls you up and out and you go to a high full finish however here's the physics of what we're going to do today suppose I set up to the ball and um, you threw a 20 pound sack of flour in my back and I didn't see it coming it would push me down yeah if I came up with 20 pounds of force at the exact moment it hit my back I would stay still now your arms and club are exerting 20 pounds of downward force on your upper torso. So if you don't push up against it, then when you allow your arms to extend and go down, you'll hit the ground very unpleasantly. Mm -hmm. The problem is when to begin the process. Almost everybody thinks, okay, as soon as I hit the ball, I'll come up. No, you have to start coming up as soon as you start going down. Mm -hmm. So the moment you begin your downswing, you have to start pushing up. Now, the little voice you hear right now that says, no, if I do that, you'll miss the ground completely, you can't listen to that voice. Okay. You're going to see that there's a very nice balance between the amount of descent that's pushing you down and the amount that you push up. So for example, here's a very small one. The moment this starts coming down, I'll come up, but I'll still hit the ground. This one will be a little bigger. As soon as it comes down, I'll come up and I'll still hit the ground. On this one, I'm going to jump in the air and I'm still going to hit the ground. Okay. So I don't want you to think under any circumstances that you're going to come up too quickly. Gotcha. When I do it with you and I show you how it feels, you'll be amazed at how the moment you begin the downswing, you'll be beginning to turn and stand. But see, if you stay bent over, you can't turn enough. If you don't turn, you'll hit behind it and then everything will be less than salt. Okay. Finally, wrist cock. Wrist cock is an ongoing concept that happens more and more and more and more as you make your backswing. And the fullness of the wrist cock doesn't happen until you actually start the downswing. Mm -hmm. But what if you only take your hands back this far? Okay, if you only took it back that far and you had the normal rate of wrist cock, you wouldn't have anything to hit with. Yeah. So by and large, the shorter the backswing, the earlier the onset of the wrist cock. Mm -hmm. Don't think of it as a complication. If you're used to having wrist cock on the way down, then it's always good to have it. Now that being said, there are some good players, uh, Jason Day and Steve Stricker come to mind, who try to use very little, if any, wrist cock for all of their pitch shots. Uh, the advantage I'm sure they th think is, okay, I'm taking out an extra variable, and I have a shallow angle of approach, which utilizes the, the bounce of the club, and to them, I'm sure it feels like it's an easier way to go, but there are times when you need to set. You need to scent very much when you're in a bad lie in the rough. So playing it back and 
picking it up will help. And you need a lot of descent when you play a bunker shot, okay, so that you can you can get it to go far enough when you do it. Yeah. So we're gonna be you'll be surprised how even though we'll turn the body and we won't shift much weight, we're gonna cock the wrist. Okay. To make that easier, we're gonna go up and down on the club accordingly. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna hit it as far as you can with your right foot down, you'd hold it at the very end like normal. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna hit one to this ball only nine yards away, you'd hold it at the very bottom. Okay. For this 25 yarder, we're gonna hold it halfway down. I see. Okay. Club against the ball, please. Okay, so that's a square one right there. Okay, now, here's your chin way back here. Mm -hmm. That's not in between your feet. Okay. Now when I move it here, are you left side heavy? Uh, yes. A little bit, okay, now here's why. You were 50-50 you were a moment ago by having your hips forward and your upper body back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a bad thing. It makes you think you're gonna slide the club under the ball and you won't descend. That's why you, you'll hit skulls. So here's an easy way to do it. Instead of facing the ball, face your feet. Where are you mm -hmm. over here? You're 50-50 now, aren't you? Yeah. Now, bend straight over. And now put the club behind the ball. That's how it's supposed to look. The ball looks behind you more, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm you sorry. can't hit down on something that you are behind. But your chin right now is directly between the feet as it should be. So that's how it should look to you all the time. We're going to turn the body and cock the wrist, but we're not going to shift much weight. We're going to hit down sharply. And we're going to turn and stand like someone called your name. Hey, Jerome. There you are right there. One last look at the can. Back down here. Let me help on this first one. Here we go. That's very different, isn't it? Yeah, that's completely different. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay, now try to hit the ground, start coming up as soon as you start down. <laughs> oh, God, you got me. <laughs> okay, again, again, again. Very good, very good. See how we do. The crowd is hushed. Oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> that's okay. Now what happened is you gave in to the most basic instinct, which is to get under the ball. Uh -huh. If you've ever taken a shovel full of dirt and thrown it over your shoulder, flipped a burger on a grill, it makes sense to you that you should get under it to make it go up. Uh -huh. But nothing could be further from the truth. We're gonna go forward and hit down. So that hits high ones and this hits low ones. Got it. Doesn't seem to make mm -hmm. sense, but it really does. Better, better. The moment you start doing this, the perception you have to have is that you are going to have the ground contact take place in the right spot. Yeah. As always, if you hit one fat, it means you're swinging to the right. Mm -hmm. If you hit one thin, you're staying back and trying to hit up on it. Mm -hmm. Most people, when they they hit a full shot, stay back because they want more time to close the club face in lieu of having a, a correct grip. Yeah. But in this case, people stay back because they feel the need to get under it to make it go up. Mm -hmm. And that is not what we need to do. So that feeling that you're going to continue to go forward and just turn and stand and let that go, that's an important concept. Okay. Okay. Uh, when it's very small, the club might stay on that side of your hands. But as, the, as it's a little farther, just like the club goes behind your hands on this side, it'll go behind your hands on this side, but it won't turn over when you do. Gotcha. So a good way to look at that is when you're approaching the ball, remember that your wristed address is curvy, but because your hands are head, it's flatter or almost bowed out. Mm -hmm. So as you approach the ball, your left wrist is bowed out. Then once you go past here, if you don't turn it over, your right wrist will get bowed out. So left wrist bowed, right wrist bowed, left wrist bowed, right wrist bowed, hitting the ground in between, that's a nice thing to feel. So when you're going back and forth, then that's a good, good thing. Final thing is the type of ground contact you want to have. If you were to take a, a short iron and hit a normal full shot with it, your chances of taking a divot that would be looking like a dollar bill would be a very good thing. However, um, the flange on the bottom of the club is an important thing that makes it more forgiving. Okay, the bounce angle, which on yours is eight degrees here, okay. is a measurement of whether this part is touching first or the leading edge is first. So when I have this vertical and I put this down here, you can see it's the flange that's actually hitting first, mm -hmm. and that little angle between between where my hand is and the leading edge is eight degrees. Mm -hmm. Now what that does is it allows you as you come through to maybe hit a little behind it and the club will skid along the ground and still collect the ball and do a good job. Okay. If you have a, a one that has too little uh, bounce, four degrees is in my opinion too little, then it would tend to stick a lot. 
Now, some people who play off of hard ground say, oh, well, I don't want so much bounce because then I'll, I'll skid into it and I'll skull it. Yeah. But really good contact doesn't require that. Okay. So um, an eight to 10 degree bounce is, is ideal. If I were to take a normal full swing, I would cut into the ground and take a divot. Mm -hmm. But if you do this properly here, you're gonna have a cloud of grass that's gonna float up in the air and then settle down. So watch how this looks. That little cloud of grass that comes up is a sign that you've done the right thing. Mm -hmm. If you're taking big divots when you do this, then you're hitting down too sharply and you're not using the bounce of the flange well. I see. If you're not hitting the ground at all, then you should go bowling because you're gonna skull every one. Yeah, yeah. But really, when you have a ball in the correct position in your stance and you step away for a practice swing, you want to A, hit the ground, B, hit the ground past the ball, and C, have the little cloud of grass that comes up. Uh -huh. When you do that, you'll have a lot of confidence that something good is about to happen, mm -hmm. and then you'll have no difficulty walking up and executing the shot. Got it. The shot we just hit is the medium height shot. Yep. You need to be able to play a lower than normal one and a higher than normal one without changing the rest of your technique. Okay. We're still gonna have knee pressure and go through, we're still gonna turn and stand, but we're gonna build it into the setup. Mm -hmm. The other nice thing about this is that both the, this, the different ones, the lower than normal and higher than normal, point up a particular aspect of the shot that most people struggle with. Okay. So in your case, because you are a scooping back, Yep. <laughs> the low one's gonna teach you how to hit down to make it go up. Uh -huh. It's something that people who have played 50 years may never know. Now the way to hit the low one has to do with ball position. Instead of playing at a ball's width inside the left heel and having the club point at my belt buckle, I'm gonna pretend I had an ice skate blade on my right foot and pointed directly at the ball. And now, when my stance is both narrow and open, I'm not gonna have the club point right of me, I'm not gonna have it point into me, I'm gonna have it point beyond me, left of me. Mm -hmm. So if it was a gun barrel, it would not shoot you. Now, when you do that, you change what's called the effective loft of the club. So watch, I'm gonna take a tee, and I'm gonna put it on the club face, like this, and that's how much it would point up. When I move the handle forward, I've changed the effective loft to make it go lower. Yep. You would think that that alone would be enough to make it go low, but not really. Here's something you may not have experienced, but you will pretty soon. You miss the fairway and hit it into the rough under a canopy of trees. Yeah. You have to shoot it out low under the trees. You take a, um, a seven iron, say, and play it way back in your stance to hit it low. Yeah. And then you hit down on it very sharply because you're catching it at a time in the arc where more descent is built in. Yep. Descent gives you backspin and backspin gives you lift. Okay, so watch. I'm gonna play this one even farther back than that. I'll play it right of my right foot, way back here with the handle this far ahead. But when I hit down this sharply, it will still go very high. Yeah. Okay, so to make it go lower, yes, you have to de-loft it. Okay, change the effective loft. But you also have to have less descent even though you're playing in a time of your, in your stance or in your arc where you would tend to have more descent. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? You don't add any upward components. You don't cock the wrist or lift your arms. Mm -hmm. Imagine that you were setting up with it way back there and then you're a, a statue on a turntable and you're just gonna turn back and forth like this. Okay. This is the single most accurate shot in the game. I will be surprised if I do not hit the can on this one. Watch this. So just a little bouncer and yes, it ends up really close all the time. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna show you. We're gonna do this one as well. A lot lower, huh? Yeah, yeah. Very good. Just a little one, here we go. Not bad, pretty good. Still stay down a little bit. Completely oh, comfortable. Up to there. The high shot, which is called the lob as well, mm -hmm. happens three times on the golf course. Number one, you have an obstacle between you and the hole that you need to go over, like a tree or something like that. Number two, you have to get over a bunker by just a little and stop it fast, mm -hmm. or you have to actually play a bunker shot. Yeah. Now, I don't want to rat everyone out, but golfers are judgmental. Mm -hmm. If you go into a bunker and you fail to get out several times in a row, <laughs> people have to bring you food, cell phone chargers, things like that, very embarrassing, yeah, okay? 100%. So you gotta feel like this is in your wheelhouse. You can make this happen for sure. Okay, so what we're gonna do here in a minute, you see I've already moved the mat well to the left here. I'm gonna have you start hitting medium ones to the left. Okay. Then once you've hit a few solid ones in a row, then I'm gonna switch the club face back on you and before you have a chance to think, we're gonna have you hit one and see if we can get the right thing to happen. Now, hit it hard, keep that right foot down Ooh. oh god okay that's all right that's Try all right 
We are very good together. Yes, we are, <laughs> no doubt about it. Hit it pretty hard. Very good. Hold on. Yeah, throw I know, I know. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to throw it at you. <laughs> very good. Harder, though. Harder. Great. One more. Beautiful. Very good. Now, right to this ball. I'm going to do that. Now, it'd be better for you if you oh couldn't God. see that, Jerome. <laughs> You're going to open and close. You're going to hit down like you just did, right? I'll okay, now, it. no delay. Okay. Boom. Go. <laughs> oh, that was... You scooped the shit out of it. Yeah. Okay, see, so if had you stayed ahead and hit down normally, it would have been higher, shorter, and wider and gone right towards the can. Yeah, yeah. But when you saw that super open face, the instinct to want to get under it was too strong. Okay, that's all right. Now we're going to go back to a few more normal ones. <laughs> okay, little until you're a little more like it. Okay, so here we go. Hit it hard, hit it 50 yards. Oh my that's God. That's okay, that's okay. Let, let it go, let it open and close. Wow, yeah, well, that, that was a lot better, wasn't it? Yeah, the it? feel's definitely different, but... Yeah, it comes off very softly, doesn't yeah, it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. very, very That good. makes sense, though. Yes. yes, if you do this one properly, you can stop the ball on a car hood. Yeah. Okay, so, so watch this one. If you were to do one very nicely, I mean, oh. you could stop it as quickly as you ever needed to. So there's nowhere they can put the pin where you can't get to it if you can do this. Finally, touch. Touch is, to my d definition, touch is knowing how the ball is going to come off your club. Uh -huh. Okay, so you need to be making solid contact first that's not scoopy in the slightest. Yeah. We don't want to go down and dig, but for every person who has their hands properly ahead at impact, there are 10,000 people who are staying back and trying to slide the club under the ball. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I heard a golf announcer from the European tour uh, last week, they showed a slow motion of somebody hitting a short game shot, mm -hmm. and the fellow remarked, look how well he slid the club under the ball on that one. The next sound I heard was me throwing my shoe at the screen, okay? Nobody slides the club under the ball. Everything is still a descending blow. Okay. So the moment you think that staying back and getting under it is gonna do you well, you're gonna start sculling it every time. Okay. So that feel for staying ahead is important. The good player, when they're, <clears throat> they've calibrated well off the medium height shot, they try to hit an aggressive shot to a small place when they're hitting a lower than normal one, but their last key thought when they're trying to hit the high one is busted. Go hard. It's always got to go harder than you think. Okay? It will never go as far as you think. It will float through the air so much. It'll be, oh my God, I thought I killed that thing and it didn't go very far at all. Yeah. Plus, these, you're hitting the ball first. When you're in the bunker, you're actually hitting three inches behind it. So that's going to muffle the contact and it's going to go even shorter. So gotcha. you've got to hit a regular lob shot off of grass that you hit solidly really harder than you think. And in the bunker, really, really, really harder than you think. <laughs> When you're actually on the golf course and you're going to try to do this, you have to do three things and you probably have 10 seconds to do it. The first thing is you have to imagine what the shot should look like. Mm -hmm. How high should it go? Where should it land? How should it react when it hits the ground? Okay. Second thing you have to do is you have to select the club and the setup that would do that. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you were on an upslope in front of a green and you were 15 feet off and you had a lot of green to work with, you could hit an eight iron and hit a low shot that way. Yep. If you were in rough and it was sitting down, you'd certainly need to hit your 60 degree to hit it low. So just, just the fact that the shot's gonna be low doesn't mean it's gonna be played with the same club and the same setup every time. Mm -hmm. But once you've figured out and visualize what the perfect shot looks like and you set up to it then the final thing you have to do is execute the shot yeah now most people think the execution of the shot is the hardest of the three but not at all okay most people have no idea what the perfect shot should look like nor do they know which club and how to set up for it. okay but when we get on the golf course what's gonna happen is when we get to one of these short game shots I'm going to tell you which club to use. There's going to be two tees stuck in the ground where you're going to stand. Yeah. I'm going to take practice things with you until I like one, and then you're going to go through and you're going to do quite well. Mm -hmm. Now, on the next hole, the shot may be longer or shorter. You may need to go higher or lower, but we're going to build that into the setup. Mm -hmm. And so, for, for example, if it's a lower one, you just play it back more, and then I'm going to tell you how, how much smaller to go, and then that'll work well as well, and you'll think, huh, 
I'm doing the same thing every time. I'm just, as soon as the arms come down, I'm turning and standing and everything's just fine. But see, you're going to feel like there's a, a certain sense of simplicity to it that perhaps did not accompany your short game shots until now. Okay. So if I was going to hit one towards that, I would set up to it. I would step back for a practice swing. I would preview where I'd go here, especially looking at the size of the follow through. For a 25 yard, I'm not going to need to go much farther than waist high. Yeah. Then I'm going to make a backswing and go to that place hitting the ground. Then I would walk on up and hit the shot. You'll be surprised to see how good you'll get at it, but please have an abiding respect for the short game as much as you do for the full game. Perfect. Great job awesome. today. Well done. Nice. Well done. <laughs> There's hope for you. Oh my God, I know. <laughs> That is a wrap for this video and that lesson. Hopefully you guys enjoyed Mike. This lesson he brought to you, the short game is pivotal for the game. And hopefully you guys are bringing this out to the course because I know I will and not have to like hit 100 shots just to get on the green. Leave that like for Mike, leave that like for that lesson. Hopefully you guys stay tuned, stay subscribed, watch all of his previous lessons, watch every video on this channel. Honestly, we're going to scratch to scratch. We're going to get there every single day. We're going to be grinding. So. That's it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.